And interestingly there, the umpire was about to do the attention go and then you heard a hat, saw a hand go up and I heard him say, as you were, which is just indicating to the athletes, I'll start the roll call again. A bit more waiting for these athletes. Harrison Skinner now happy in that bow seat. Go! Off they go. And this will be about who's managed that weight better. They've had a long wait sitting on the start and who has really managed it and got themselves ready, got their heads in the boat and been able to come off and look there. Lee, they've got a really, really fast start. A little bit of steering, but they have absolutely raced away. Yeah, Lee Rowing Club thrashing away on the Buck Station, Mason and Victor Rowing Club on the Berkshire Station. They've both gone at a ferocious stroke rate early on in this race. Now it'll calm down, it'll have to calm down quickly, but the early advantage Nearest the picture, Lee Rowing Club. Harrison Skinner is on the right of the picture there in the bow seat that I mentioned earlier, along with uh, Matthew Gekeskian and Jamie Palmer and Ryan Cheel as well. We have yeah. taken the uh, length and a half lead, two lengths maybe now. Yeah, Jamie Car Palmer, he's tasted victory at this regatta, having won the Thames Cup in 2015 for Thames Rowing Club. He's now gone over to Lee and you see him now um, competing for them um, in this regatta. It's the club's top ranked boat, hardly surprisingly. Lee Ryan Club. Looking very good, setting a decent early pace here. Oh, and look at that sky. Look at that sky. That's what we want. This is an incredible shot, isn't it? You get an idea of the speed that both these crews are travelling and you get the speed of an idea of sort of the rowing stroke. They make it look so easy, but it takes so much physical effort. You've got your legs who are driving the race, the boat there. And what I've loved seeing this Mason crew is just a bit more cleanliness in the finish for them to settle down and be able to step out of the water a little bit better, which will give them a bit more boat speed. pedestrians strolling down the riverbank. That's the quieter end of the course up near Temple Island. And it is Lee that is the first crew to the barrier. You see that number two being lifted up on the barrier box. There's a race and reporter there in there. They're shouting out now to the umpire's launch to tell them the distance between the crews and in a minute you'll see them lift up the second number one and tell us what the gap is at the barrier. Yeah, that's the progress marker at the barrier. We've got Fawley a little bit further down the water as well. Crucial moments in the race. Do the rowers use that information at all or is that entirely for those of us watching? Interestingly, when I was a rower and I was doing the calls, the information I used actually was where I was in the boat, because you're used to being, or I was used to being in a 2,000 metre course, so you get very, very clear 500 metre markers, and I had the course broken down in my head, and so every 500 I knew, or every 250 I knew what I was going to focus on. When you come to this course, you transfer that knowledge, that practice, but onto the markers of this course. So at the barrier, I would have a call that I wanted to do, and I'll be checking how I wanted the boat to feel. So. Absolutely, it was as used as much, I guess, as we do, but in a different way. There's a white flag being raised, and that's uh, to try and alert the boat on the Buck Station, isn't it? Is it the rowing club who have just uh, drifted a bit? Yeah, that's umpire Richard Phelps feeling that perhaps the Lee had moved into the centre of the course a little bit much and perhaps were um, washing down, if you like, or impeding Maidstone. So he's put the... Um, but, um, ask them to put the rudder on and you can see that the boat has responded um, quickly and now they're moving up onto this um, Buckinghamshire station and um, where you'd expect to see them. So exactly what we were talking about a little earlier on. A substantial lead but still stay on your station. There they are with their substantial lead, Lee Rowing Club. And on the right of the picture there, top right corner, you can see the, uh, where they're boating now, isn't it? It's a very different uh, experience for the competitors as they warm up. And you can see a couple of boats warming up on the uh, right-hand side of the picture there. A big moment awaits whilst the Lee Rowing Club there in 
in the thick of it. Yeah, and you'll look, there's just two men or women rowing in that boat. The other two, I'm sure, will be looking over, thinking, I'd like to be in that position of that lee boat in a, a few minutes' time. They'll be coming down the course. We'll be watching them in about 20 minutes. And look, here is the lee crew. Now, let's look at them and see. We've got the two men there talking to the, his fellow crew men, giving them information, asking them for a little bit more, maybe, or just asking for a call. Yeah, Ryan Cheel there in the stroke seat for Lee in the sunglasses. And they've got some work to do. You can see stretching out ahead of them. Another progress marker. I was wondering if the wind's picked up a little bit in the last half hour. Seems to be a little bit more blustery. I was just watching myself with a pothole on the water, and I think you're right, the big flag on the back of the umpire's launch, you can see that really flapping in the breeze, and I suspect these men can feel the wind on the, their backs. Um, I'm just going to look and see if I can see a flag at all around us, but I can't see anything that gives me enough information to, to be completely sure, but you can see that. And it's interesting, the, the um, maidstone boat there, they have drifted over, they may feel like they want to be away from the booms, but they're putting themselves into the wash of the lead crew, which it always feels a little bit different. It just feels a little bit more disrupted, and especially if only in this side your uh, bow side blades are in it, you, you get a different feel on each side of the boat. If you're in a coxing boat, um, so if you're in a, in a sculling boat, so you've got a blade on each side, you feel it yourself. Obviously, in this boat, we've only got four men each with a blade out of one side, so you don't know necessarily what the others are feeling. And um, so it's really a different part to match that uneven water. Well, the last Whitefold Challenge Cup competition a couple of years ago ended up going to Australia. Sydney Rowing Club won this one, the men's fours from Sydney. But Lee Rowing Club have put down a marker here. They're not home yet, but it appears that they've got a uh, well-organised outfit. In with a chance. Yeah, I think we again uh, want to watch you. Know, you look at the um, Harrison Skinner, Skinner, the bow man. He's been rowing at least since he was 14 years old with a silver medal in the um, 2019 lightweight one times at Buckshire Gasser. So some real experience, but some real loyalty as well um, for, for this club. So they'll be delighted with this campaign. So Skinner, so Harrison Skinner in the bow seat back you can see nearest the camera Matthew gets here Jamie Palmer and Ryan Cheel heading for the line the members of this boat went out to that winning crew in 2019 in the semi-final so they'll be delighted to get their campaign off with a win uh, ready to move on to Thursday So Lee Rowan Club successful in round one of the Wyfold Challenge Cup. Maidstone and Victor Rowan Club chasing them home. Not too much of a gap, only a, a length or so in that one. But well done to Lee Rowan Club.